feel like this is gonna be really, really long. Hey guys, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read and it is time to talk about what I'm going to read in March. This is uh, more like as Kazen from Always Doing says, a pile of possibilities. Because there's absolutely no way that I'm getting to probably even half of the books on this TBR. But it's fun to try anyway. There's just too much fun happening uh, in the booktube world in March to not be participating. Um, the first three are kind of going to just be smaller things and I have two significant read-alongs or read-a-thons uh, that I'll be participating in to some degree. So the first is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tolls and this is my uh, booktube spin, booktube spin choice or not choice but the book that was spun for. I have not started this yet. I was kind of saving it for March uh, as I've been focusing more on Black History Month reading for the month of February. And the, the category that, that in the booktube spin that this was part of were uh, books, uh, booktube made me do it books. A book that I bought specifically because a particular booktuber really loves this book. And in this case, uh, Olive at a book Olive loves both the rules of civility and a gentleman in Moscow. And then Kim over at Middle of the Book March is doing this uh, Thomas Cromwell, like year-long Thomas Cromwell project. And Wolf Hall is the first fiction book. So the idea is there was this book biography about Thomas Cromwell. Um, I'm not going to end up actually fully reading that. I started it. Uh, I think I'm going to use it more of as a reference as I read through this trilogy. But I would like to get this started in March. And then the last book that has nothing to do with anything else is You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. I've started this. I was actually reading a little bit of this a little, little while ago, um, a little over 50 pages. And, and basically, you know, uh, I went from kind of being basically financially taken care of, not having to work and make money, uh, just being able to be there for my husband. And then when he passed away, uh, like 90% of the income uh, went with him. And so now I'm, I'm a business person. Uh, so I was a coach before, but now I like have to be a business person. I'm a solopreneur and the kind of the asking for money, the being okay with going out and like the idea of kind of thriving financially. And um, I have a life changing service to offer people. And I know that I know the value that's in that, but it's hard for me to translate that now into give me your money so that I can change your life. Um, so that this is, this is helping with that. So from there, we're going to go to middle grade March and I have way too many possibilities here, but it's really hard to, to, to narrow it down. So what I, what I think I'll do is kind of, this is my pile of possibilities for middle, middle grade March, and then maybe kind of read by whim, um, from there. So there are, uh, there are prompts for middle grade March. Uh, their group read is The Brave by James Bird. I actually just popped over to my local independent bookstore. They did not have a copy of it. Because I have so much already, I might, I might just not even worry about trying to get my hands on it. I was thinking about maybe to see if I could get it on my Kindle uh, through my library or maybe audiobook. So I still might, I still might try to do that, particularly on audiobook, but if not, I still have plenty to be getting on with. Some of these books would work for multiple prompts. For a book with a silhouette on the cover, I have Doll Bones by Holly Black. And right up here, it actually, it's a really common thing right now for books to have a silhouette on the cover. When I was at the bookstore, I noticed a bunch of them, but this was the only one, middle grade one actually, that I could find that had any sort of silhouette on the cover. And I didn't even, I thought I didn't have any, and it wasn't until later that I noticed that. So that is that one. Um, a book with a strong family or found family. And I have a couple, I think I have several kind of for this one, but the one that I hope to start even before March, uh, just given to me by my niece or lent to me by my niece. And that is Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. I think this was actually written in like the thirties. Oh, 1976, okay. Maybe it was something else that was written written much earlier um, than that. But anyway, this is found family, and in in this, so uh, this little girl Cassie, I think, yeah, Cassie is uh, like made fun of by this white girl because of the color of her skin, and then at some point um, in the novel, I think, kind of the, the the main leading factor in this novel is that something happens where her family really 
finds out the importance of land and owning land is, and this was a, a Newberry uh, medal winner, Another kind of fam found family, um, and I think also maybe featuring adventure, maybe fits the, the, the fairy tale kind of uh, prompt is the incorrigible children of Ashton Place, the mysterious howling. And I saw this on this series really um, from uh, Jean on Jean Bookish Thoughts. These two kids were found in the forest and they were raised by wolves apparently and so now um i guess it's like an orphanage kind of thing and they have to ki kind of have to uh civilize the incorrigibles as they are um before in time for lady constance's holiday ball so this sounds a little it sounds interesting almost a little like um what is it what is that movie there's two different versions of it. One starts with the P and the other one is has the word lady in it. <laughs> I can't think of it right now. I'll think of it later. Uh, Ghost by Jason Reynolds. I've had this for a while. Um, it was a National Book Award finalist. I haven't read this yet. I've heard a lot of good things about Jason Reynolds as, um, in addition to this specific book. And um, I suppose this would be good for featuring a journey or an adventure. Uh, because our protagonist, Ghost, is a great athlete. He plays basketball, uh, but he's also a really good runner, and he gets the opportunity to like run for, or, like, run in front of the Olympic track coach. And so he, uh, I think, kind of takes it up a notch as far as his training goes. And uh, yeah, I've just heard really good things about this. There is a second, but first of four books, so this is the beginning of a series. A definite fairy tale vibe is the uh, the Trumpet of the Swan by uh, by E.B. White. I've never read anything by E.B. White other than Charlotte's Web. And this was one that uh, my niece, Holly, uh, was getting rid of some books and um, that she just feels like she's not gonna get around to. And this is in perfect condition. And so this sounds really, really nice. The main character, Swan, uh, isn't able to, to you know, make its, make its uh, trumpeter swan sound. And uh, so, you know, it's kind of like an ugly duckling kind of thing, I suppose. Um, and then his dad finds this trumpet for him and he's able to play the trumpet now um, rather than using his own larynx. Do geese have larynxes like we do? Um, and uh, is a musical instrument, instrument the key to Lewis winning his love? Another strong family one here we have Esperanza Rising by Pam Munoz Ryan. And this is a girl and her mom um, have to leave their ranch in Mexico to go uh, to California. Uh, and they live at, for at, like, at a camp for Mexican farm workers. So I have Mexican heritage. My grandfather is 100% Mexican. Uh, although he, both he and his parents were born in the States. So um, for as much as we know, uh, it seems like his grandparents, great grandparents, however, however far back, basically just were on the U.S. side of the border when a border came to be. Uh, but he did grow up going into Mexico to see family and all. And um, I've really never read much uh, Mexican literature. I, I did look. I was I was hoping that the author was uh, born in Mexico. She is not. Uh, but this looks like an interesting story. Oh yeah, it's also, it's set during the Great Depression. And then a reread for me, another adventure, another thing kind of found family one would be The Adventures of Edward Tulane by Kate DiCamillo. I love Kate, Kate DiCamillo, um, The Tale of Despero. I have read this one. I think I read this on a plane, uh, like a plane ride from Sacramento to San Diego, which isn't very long. It's like an hour and 15 minute flight. And I just like rushed through it. And I hardly remember anything about this one. Um, but uh, Edward Tulane is a porcelain rabbit and uh, he's not very nice. And um, I think it's one of those, I, I really love this trope in, in like um, adult literature, but where 
you have kind of a crotchety, unlikable character, and then as they encounter other people, uh, they're like touched by them and they improve basically as, as a person and become more endearing and, um, and, and change a lot. So that's uh, Edward Twain. Uh, a book written in the decade that you were born. Um, I am an 80s baby and there are not a lot of choices, but I was happy to find that Super Fudge by Judy Bloom was written in 1980. Um, I also, I got a bunch of Judy Bloom books from Holly as well. They're like a great variety of, like they were written over a very long span of time. I think the first, I can't remember what the, Tales of, four, of a Fourth Grade Nothing I think was the first one. And that was written in like, 1970, I think, and then this one not till 1980. Double Fudge was like 2006 or something. Like one of them was like so recent, it really surprised me. I feel like this is gonna be really, really long. It is also March Mystery Madness, and I love me some mystery books, so I have a stack here that I would like to get to. There's like kind of a cool like. It's, it almost reminds me of like a really simple uh, game board kind of thing, but there are eight, nine, nine word prompts that relate to the title of uh, the book. Um, and uh, the ninth one is a bonus. I have a selection of books that I want to read and they align in some way with one of these prompts. So for the prompt title with a number, I have Third Girl by Agatha Christie. This is a Poirot. I think I've only read two Poirots, uh, Murder on the Ori Orient Express and The Big Four. And then for the prompt of time, we have No More Dying Then by Ruth Rendell. And this is an Inspector Wexford mystery. I've never read any Ruth Rendell, but I know a Kate Howe speaks very highly of her no idea where this is in the uh, Wexford like series or anything like that. For person, we have Whose Body by Dorothy Sayers. I love this edition. And um, this was one of my, my book club's books for uh, last time that I didn't get around to doing. I haven't been going to the book club in person because I live with my parents. Um, and so just trying to keep things distance as well as I can. Um, but looking forward to this, and this is the first in the um, uh, Lord Peter Whimsey mystery series. Then we have a cozy, cozy Agatha Raisin mystery. This is The Blood of an Englishman. Um, I just love this cover. Uh, I have three of them of these hardbacks that um, I got these when um, a local uh, record and bookstore closed um, and so everything was like 70% off or something like that. So whatever 70% off of $3.99 is, that's how much this book cost me. Um, and Agatha Raisin is a amateur. Well, you know what? I think this is her 25th adventure. I think she actually might end up opening up a like detective agency or private investigator or something like that. She starts off as a young retired woman who, who retires to the Cotswolds. She's only 55, I think, when she does that. And, uh, you know, something is always afoot and she always puts her foot right in it. And this is a continuation of that. She's super like funny um, and like just cute. And then finally, we have Heaven My Home by Attica Locke. This is the second in the Highway 59 series with our Texas Ranger, uh, Darren Matthews. Darren is a very proud black Texan and very proud to be a Texas Ranger following the footsteps of his uncle. Uh, he has, his, his mom is kind of in a bad way and they there's you know a rough relationship there. And he lives in a very racist, part of the state. And uh, I believe in this one, he ends up in, like uh, searching for um, a young boy who goes missing. And the boy is the son of the, um, like the leader or a, a prominent member of the Texas Aryan Brotherhood. So these 16 books are my wildly ambitious pile of possibilities. Oh, the possibilities, if there was no time, if time wasn't a thing. Um, I'm really looking forward to reading all of these books and you know, interested to see which ones I will actually get to. Uh, a Gentleman on Moscow will definitely be a high priority as that was my booktube spin book. Um, yeah, let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're participating in any of the readathons. If you're doing the booktube spin, what is your book? Have you read it yet? Um, thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.